If you've been around this channel for any length of time, you will know that I have recommended Backblaze B2 in various different videos, just as a general cloud backup, mainly because that's what I use. I've used it for many years and I still use it, but I'm here to say that I was wrong about Synology C2 in one specific area. So I recently had a consulting client ask about Synology C2 and what my opinion was on it. If you aren't aware, I do consulting on the side. Um, I will leave a link to that in the description if you're interested in hiring me. But the reality is it got me to go back and really understand how Synology C2 works and how it differs from Backblaze B2. And in a specific scenario, it might actually be a better backup destination for you. So rather than talking about it, I really want to show you. So to try and get the best overall test, I took a folder that I normally work out of and I added it to a test NAS. And what I did is I backed it up to C2 storage as just a regular folder, and then I backed up the entire NAS. Now, it is not a perfect test because I have immutable snapshots on this NAS and I can't delete them for 14 days. So rather than waiting 14 days, I went through and I deleted just about everything, deleted all the apps, deleted all the data, and there's really not that much, but I don't think it really impacted the test. So what I wanna show you is that inside of Synology C2, this first task here, C2 versus B2, that is just the folder backup. So the host name is different, but what I did is I copied the specific folder from my NAS to my test NAS, and I did it so that I could back up the entire system and try to get a actual number for this. So to be clear, when you go into Hyper Backup, you have two options here. You have folders and packages and you have entire system. So that first backup, what I did is just to show you a really quick example. I went in and I selected this one WonderTech folder and then I backed that data up. Now, for the full backup, what I did is I backed up this entire system. So the folder, the WonderTech folder lives on the NAS and it is part of the entire operating system that has applications, it has other shared folders, no real data, um, but it does have other shared folders configured, it has some configurations, some packages, et cetera. And what you'll see is that the actual backup is about 10% less for the entire system than it is for the specific folder. And the reason for that is when you back up the entire system, you're actually utilizing block level backups. So I don't really wanna get too deep into it, but there's file level deduplication and block level deduplication. And if you use this entire system option, you're actually utilizing a block level backup, which can utilize block level deduplication. So the actual backup, while it's the exact same data, and in this case, it's actually more data because we're backing up other packages and other shared folders, it is smaller. It's actually close to 10% smaller. So if you extrapolate that out and start talking about terabytes of data, you can quickly see how 10% can be a significant savings from a price perspective. Now, from a time perspective, I did not run any tests in terms of how long the backup took, how long a restore would take. Um, there was an article I saw recently on Reddit that somebody did. Uh, I'll leave a link to that in the description. That was great testing, but I did not really look at any of that. I really just wanted to look at the usage. Um, so from a usage perspective, it was about 10% less. Now, Synology C2 pricing is not the same as Backblaze, and that's where using Backblaze might still make sense. So Synology C2 pricing is a stepped pricing. So what that means is if you use one terabyte, you will be charged for one terabyte. But if you use 1.01 terabytes, you will be charged for two terabytes. It's stepped. With Backblaze B2, if you use 1.01 terabytes, you will only be charged for 1.01 terabytes. So it's also a little cheaper. I believe it's $6 a terabyte as opposed to $7 a terabyte with C2. But the big thing that you're gonna have to determine is if you're doing a full NAS backup. And if you want to do a full NAS backup, your only options are Synology C2 and a remote NAS device. Now I did some testing between Synology C2 and 
Backblaze B2 in terms of just backups to see if there was any difference in the actual backup sizes and the difference was extremely minimal, something that you probably shouldn't even take into consideration. So for all intents and purposes, Synology C2 versus Backblaze B2 will be generally the same from a backup size perspective if you are using the shared folder option. Now, if you're using the entire system backup, that's where it's gonna be different. So who does this make sense for? Well, I think Synology C2 makes sense for people that want to back up the entire NAS. And when I say the entire NAS, I mean everything. You can't pick and choose exactly what you wanna back up. If you plan on picking and choosing what you wanna back up, I would personally use Backblaze only because it's gonna be cheaper. That's the main point. The actual backup size is the same. The way it works is the same. The setup is a little more difficult. I have a tutorial on that that I could leave in the description, but the setup is a little more difficult, but it will be cheaper in the long run. If you're somebody that wants to back up your entire NAS and you do not want to use a remote NAS backup, you really only have Synology C2 as your option. Now, a remote NAS will obviously be extremely expensive up front. But in the long run, it's going to be cheaper because if you buy a DS923 Plus and you fill it with four hard drives and you back it up somewhere offsite, assuming you have a location offsite where you actually can back it up, it's going to be cheaper because in the long run, let's say you are using 10 terabytes and let's say it costs 600 US dollars to set up that offsite NAS. Yes, it was $600 up front and there will be revolving costs in terms of electricity and potentially internet, I, I don't know. I don't want to really want to get that deep into it. But the point is that 10 terabytes on Synology C2 will cost you $70 a month. So you'll see very quickly that in the course of a year, you'll probably spend more than you would on a remote NAS. Uh, obviously the remote NAS, you have to keep up with security updates and the operating system updates, et cetera. But if you're looking purely from a price perspective, a remote NAS will be a cheaper option and it will utilize block level deduplication as well. So Synology C2 utilizes it, but a remote NAS will utilize it as well. The important point in this scenario is really that if you're somebody that went into hyper backup and you selected all the applications and you selected all your shared folders because you want to back everything up, Synology C2 might actually be a better option because of that deduplication. You might save enough actual storage space to offset the costs that you would spend by the increased price of Synology C2 and the actual stepped pricing. So this is totally dependent on your data. Deduplication will work based on your data, how similar it is, exactly what you're storing, et cetera. I can't promise you that Synology C2 will be a 10% savings the way that it is in this example here. I can't promise that. For you, it might actually be more. It could be 20%, I, I have no idea. But the point is that if you're somebody that's backing up your entire NAS and you want to utilize block level deduplication, Synology C2 is actually a really good option. I'm very impressed with how it worked. So I'm hopeful that this video helped you guys out. If it did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.